What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Musa La Torre. Join the family and hit that subscribe button. We are doing a bit of a vlog today. I'm bringing these back in 2020. I know a lot of you have requested for more vlogs, more lifestyle, nutrition, fitness, all that stuff. So it's 2020, it's a new decade. We are doing it. Kyle's here in the background. If you hear noise, it's him right there. So uh, earlier today, I was on Instagram stories and I showed you guys my cinnamon apple oatmeal bake. For the longest time, I was avoiding grains. I do suffer from IBS. It really sucks. And I figured, well, I used to disguise it. I used to not talk about it because I'm like, wow, that's like really embarrassing. I remember Kyle actually, I think it was like when we were first dating, like in the first month, when it was like my ultimate, like, wow, this is really bad. We went to yogurt land and I used to go in. <laughs> Are you laughing? I used to go in on yogurt land, okay? Like, if you guys aren't familiar with yogurt land, have never been there, it's a self serve frozen yogurt spot. And basically, at the end, you so you pick out your frozen yogurt, your toppings, and then they weigh it. So depending on how much it weighs is how much your cup will cost. And I used to walk out of there with cups that were like $10, okay? That's a lot. We had just started dating and we went to Yogurt Land. We were sitting on the couch and I was like, oh my God, I cannot stop farting. <laughs> and it's like those like really painful farts where like I couldn't even hold it in. This is TMI, but I'm sharing this because a lot of you out there probably suffer from it as well. It's really common. Um, I finally... Is that a Mika fur? It is. Not too long ago, actually, finally got, saw a gastroenterologist, and they're the ones that told me um, that it's most likely you're, you have symptoms of IBS with certain foods. I had to do the FODMAP diet, elimination diet. I'll put some information down below in the description box for you guys in case you want to check that out. It helps you basically get to know your body and when it reacts poorly to foods. I did that, I realized a lot of grains were causing it, and so I decided to try gluten-free grains. Now, I don't have a gluten allergy, I don't want you guys to get that confused. I am just very sensitive to it, it'll cause IBS symptoms to spark up in my body and so I started eliminating them from my diet especially quinoa and I used to love quinoa because you know it's high in protein high in fiber but my body just does not like quinoa so I had avoided eating oats decided to slowly reintroduce them um, I'll show you guys the ones that I use anyway the reason I'm telling you guys this long ass story is because um, why am I telling you guys this long story? Why am I sharing these stories with you guys? Um, I just wanted to clarify that in case you have like a gluten intolerance, grain intolerance. I find that this works for me. I haven't had a bad reaction. It's delicious, high in protein. I am going to show you the recipe that I based this recipe off of. When I first made it, I entered it into my fitness pal. They're chasing squirrels. Does anybody care that I'm trying to film a vlog here? I took the original recipe that I found on Pinterest. I made it, it was freaking delicious. I put it into my fitness pal. It's an app that tracks your macros, your nutrition, and I was shocked because the macros on it were so high. It literally ate up a huge percentage of my carb and fat intake for the day. And I was like, I can tweak this recipe to make it a little more macro friendly and healthy so that you don't eat up all your macros with breakfast. So let me show you guys the recipe. So this is my cinnamon apple baked oatmeal. It makes six servings, a total of 270 calories, fat 12.3 grams, carbs 32.5 grams, and protein 10 grams. So I made it higher in protein. Carbs are still a little high, but I tend to eat 150 grams of protein a day. So for me, this is great. And let me just go through all the ingredients that you guys are gonna need. You're gonna need about these are four small Honeycrisp apples. Two medium-sized ones will work great as well. I prefer any type of like sweet pink apple, I guess you could say, pink ladies, gala, Honeycrisp, Fiji or Fuji, whatever those apples are called. Your choice of milk, I personally love. Or whatever milk of choice is your preference. If you are lactose intolerant like yours truly, hence my yogurt land story. <laughs> I love oat milk because it doesn't change the flavor of whatever it is that you're making. It's a very neutral flavor, so it's great in my matcha lattes. Still team matcha gang gang. 
unsweetened applesauce. Make sure it's unsweetened or else you're gonna add more sugar, more carbs. Vanilla extract. I really don't understand vanilla extract. I think it smells horrendous straight from the bottle, but for some reason it tastes good when you mix that. The hero of this recipe, ground cinnamon. I cannot get enough. I feel like I have so much ground cinnamon in my diet. <laughs> baking powder. I honestly don't understand the point of baking powder either, but the original recipe called for it, so I've added it. This is the bag from Joe's. You need some walnuts. I'm sure you could do it with pecans as well. I like to do the raw walnut baking pieces, not roasted, no salt, nothing, just raw walnuts. Rolled oats that are gluten-free. Um, my body tends to do well on these. I haven't had a bad reaction and uh, they are very, very filling. Some salt. Um, I use Himalayan pink salt just because I've had this giant tub forever and I'm trying to finish it up, um, but any salt will do. And then, uh, eggs. If you want to make it vegan, you can use what I read was like a flax egg. Look, I'm all for, I'm trying to be more plant-based. I'm always trying to be more plant-based, but what trips me out is when I see like a flax egg for an egg substitute. I'm like, mm, I'll just stick with the real egg. Anyway, let's make this food. Step one is to preheat the oven to 350. It was already there. I don't know why I did that. Yeah, he throws his bowl around when he wants something and he's already had breakfast, he's already had water, he's had some raw cow's milk, which is his new favorite. So I don't know what you're like asking me for now. Here we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is combine all the dry ingredients into a separate bowl from the wet ingredients. So first up, two cups rolled oat. Dos. Half cup walnuts two teaspoons cinnamon. I'm using a half teaspoon just because it actually fits in here, which makes it way more satisfying than trying to dump this into a one teaspoon spoon. So we're gonna do four of these since they're half teaspoons. Quarter teaspoon salt. Honestly, I don't even know if Himalayan salt is good to cook with, but whatever, it works. <laughs> Boomer. A teaspoon of this stuff. And then we're just gonna stir this all together. Now for the wet ingredients. The first thing you wanna do is crack open the four eggs and whisk them. I do it with a fork. You don't wanna just like dump it all in together. You want it to be nicely whisked together. It's way more satisfying. So let's crack four eggs. Again, if you wanna make it vegan, you can use a flax egg, whatever that is. <laughs> Sorry to my vegans out there, okay? I have tried being completely vegan and with my IBS, it is nearly, not. it's not impossible, I know it's possible, it's very, very difficult. You have something to say? On an all vegan diet, it's very, very difficult for me to get my amount of protein when I can't have some of the high protein foods like quinoa and other grains. Taking a fork and just Oh sh <laughs> this sketch. Half a cup of the unsweetened applesauce. This is brand new. If you guys don't know this hack on opening jars, you take a butter knife. And it should pop right open. <laughs> okay, come on. <gasps> there we go. So half a cup, half cup oat milk. and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And the last thing I like to do before combining all the ingredients together is chop up the apples. I just don't like to see them turn brown, so I'd rather... This guy. So I'd rather do it at the end and then combine everything at once. And I'm gonna chop... I'm gonna chop them into tiny little pieces, little cubes, so it mixes nicely with everything else. I'm actually gonna stop here because this looks like a pretty hefty amount. The original recipe, which I will go over afterwards while this is baking, calls for one cup of apples. And I think maybe my last Honeycrisp apple batch was like really, really tiny apples. So I needed a lot more, but um, those two gave me plenty. This looks like 
more than one cup of diced apples. Okay, I'm gonna toss everything into the large bowl containing the dry ingredients. So, throwing the one cup of apples, then the wet ingredients, and then you wanna keep mixing this all together until it's super thick and every single oat in there is completely coated in the wet mixture. The more it looks like this, the better it's gonna come out. I'm gonna be baking the mixture directly into the meal prep containers. These are oven safe, they're glass. Do not do this at home if your dishware is not oven safe. Use like an eight by eight uh, oven pan. I've already melted down some coconut butter. I've melted some coconut butter. I have uh, just a paper towel and to make these non-stick, I dip the paper towel into the coconut oil and then just rub it into the pan like so. My mom taught me to do this. She would always prep baking pans like this and it works. So this is a food measuring scale. So I wanna make sure that everything is the exact same amount in all three containers. So that way the macros stay the same when you portion it out versus one having way more than the other because then you're definitely eating way more on some days versus others. I kind of just keep adjusting it until I get an even amount in all three containers. Just give it one more good mix. So now each one of these has 320 grams. Now I'm just gonna even them out and we're gonna pop them in the oven. And we're gonna let those bake for 30 minutes. Okay, so while we let that bake, I just wanna to talk to you guys about how I, are we centered? How I tweaked the original recipe to make it more macro-friendly and healthy-ish. So the original recipe called for a quarter cup coconut oil and a quarter cup maple syrup, which I completely removed from this recipe. Instead, oh, and it also called for two eggs. I did four eggs. So what that did is, am I really bright right now? Can you guys see my nose? Is it just kind of like blending into my face? There we go. <laughs> what that did is it changed the recipe to have way more protein. So it has 10 grams of protein, less fat, less sugar. So, I mean, less fat. <laughs> Less fat, less carbs, which is, yeah, less sugar. Um, so that way you're not eating all of your macros in one meal. If you guys aren't familiar with macros and I'm like kind of talking gibberish to you guys, I highly recommend doing a little research on it, maybe giving it a try for a day. Download the Fitness Pal app. This is hashtag not sponsored in any way. But that app and tracking your macros really allows you to understand your body and how much you should be consuming. So that way you're a little more mindful when you're eating. Um, I find that it's the best way to get in shape without being so restrictive with your diet. You can still eat a variety of foods. You can still eat carbs. You're just way more mindful of how many carbs you're eating versus eating none at all, which to me is very unrealistic. Yeah. Replacing the half cup coconut oil reduced the fat. Coconut oil definitely made it a lot more moist. Moist? Removing the quarter cup made it less sweet. But what I like to do instead is, so this is the um, maple syrup that I used in the original recipe. It is from Trader Joe's, 100% pure maple syrup. Um, instead, I will drizzle just a teaspoon of this onto my serving before eating it versus having it mixed in to the recipe. Because it says the serving on here is a quarter cup and a quarter cup is 52 grams of carbs, 52 grams of sugar. And I'm definitely not gonna pour half a cup onto my serving, um, but I can drizzle a small amount and it's just as satisfying as if it were in the recipe. If not, to me, it's way more satisfying to drizzle it on top. I feel like, um, it's much more flavorful that way. You taste it more versus being mixed in. Um, another option that I picked up was this Chalk Zero sugar-free maple syrup. It contains, I'm pretty sure it contains zero alcohol sugars. The ingredients are liquid vegetable fiber, natural maple flavor, monk fruit for the sweetener, and caramel color. Um, I bought this because when I was going to uh, try and find a replacement for the maple syrup in the recipe. I was gonna throw this in there, a quarter cup of this, 
And then I was like, you don't need to necessarily put it in there. Like you want the recipe to be higher in protein so that you're more satisfied immediately after the gym. I have this on my way home in the car. Um, so I'm like, you don't need to pour that in there. Plus once I tried heating this up, it got really weird. I was like, what is liquid vegetable fiber? <laughs> so I'll still use this. Like I'm not knocking it. I'll still try it, but um, I would prefer to use a drizzle of pure maple syrup that has real sugar, not refined sugar versus um, the chalk zero, even though I'll still try this. So if you see me eating this, don't come at me, okay? Don't at me, chalk zero. Today's video is sponsored by chalk zero. I'm just kidding. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes! I'm gonna pop these suckers out. Ooh, it smells so freaking delicious. You guys don't even know. I wish you could smell this. You know, what I love about baking or cooking is the more you make something, the better it comes out every single time. So I'll literally just cut these down the middle and then scoop it out. One for me, one for Kyle. Drizzle with maple syrup. No more than a teaspoon. That's all you need. Trust me, guys. It's so concentrated when you just drizzle it on top and it's delicious. Once these have cooled down, I will cut them in half, wrap them up, and then in the morning, on the way home from the gym, in the car, Kyle and I will each eat our serving. Oh, actually drizzle the maple syrup before. Cut them in half, drizzle, wrap them up, and then eat it on the way home. I like it cold or hot. If you're new to it, you might not like it cold. I personally like it. Today, Kyle said it reminds him of a cookie slash pie, which is a good sign to hear from Kyle because he's kind of, he's not a picky eater. He just likes things to taste delicious. So I think it's kind of a picky eater. But I just love it. Um, I love that after the gym, I'm usually really, really hungry, especially after a heavy lifting day. And to have that in my bag just ready to go is life-saving. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Let me know if you guys give it a try. Maybe we can come up with a hashtag. Comment down below any hashtag ideas. I would love for us to start cooking together and really you know, make 2020 and the rest of this decade the year of health. I believe in you guys. Stick to those resolutions. It's all about baby steps. Don't try to do it all at once. This is still delicious and nutritious. So I hope you guys liked it. Give it a like if you did. Share it with anyone who might have made a resolution to be healthier this year and is looking for some good recipes. Share it with them. Don't be greedy. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Mwah.